name and name. Okay, this inner product and name that this is jth abstract abstract Fourier coefficient.
other words, it's set of those vectors which are not conormal. In other words, they are orthogonal to each other and the, the you know, norms are I would like to prove this. So if that if I have a G which is a linear combination, lambda I, E I, where I runs from 1 to n. In other words, so in other words, G is in the span of this orthonormal system. That's what we are saying. What would be the meaning of a span? So all possible linear combinations. Okay, so I'm saying that G is an element in the span basically. It's a, it's a one linear combination, so this must be in a span. Okay, so that G is in a span where these lambda i is a scalar set. Okay, if lambda i is a scalar. Then I have this first result that if you take this linear combination, any linear combination of this orthogonal system, and take its inner product with, for example, an abstract yeah. element ej, okay, of this orthogonal system again, what do you think? What are you going to have? Lambda. You're going to see that why this is true. Okay. And another thing, what would be the norm of this G? The square of norm of this G. So this must be okay, the sum of lambda i is the square where i runs from. But keeping in view this notation, I can rewrite basically this expression as that this is same as i equal to 1 to n g e i e i absolute of e i square by nature of e i square. Is it making sense? Okay. That's what the first part I have. Okay, let's 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 prove this first one. The second part is trivial because what would be the magnitude of magnitude of g is going to be this expression. But since lambda i, so since lambda j is g e j, so the lambda i is going to be g e i square. Okay. So the only non-trivial thing is going to be. Let's prove A part first and then get into that. Okay. So I have to compute G E J. Okay. So what I need to do, I have to do lambda I E I E I E J E J. What should I do next? Uh, e J. All of this are zero. Use the linearity. Use the linearity. Linearity of what? In a product linearity. Okay. In the first component. Not linearity, but we should say, you know, C C to what? Okay. No, no, no. This. Fast linearity. Fast linearity. Okay. It's a, it's a pretty difficult thing to pronounce. Especially for you know, Indians of continent people. <laughs> But at least for me, that's pretty that. So it's going to be sum of what you call lambda i's and e i e j. Okay? And if this is the case, I know that this sum is going to be the Kronecker delta i j. So, see, if you understand this argument, fine. Let's 
good that you should make sense of it. But just think about it. So EI, EJ is always zero. EI, EJ is always zero un unless I and J are equal. Okay? So the only term which is going to survive in this whole sum is going to be when or, and you need to be careful that I is a variable here, J is fixed. Okay, properly. You should write I is variating while the J is fixed. Okay. So the only thing which is going to survive is going to be lambda J and times that is going to be. And if you have this, you have this as well. Okay. This repetition is part of. Now consider, so we consider a, a abstract, what do you call, a linear combination and saw that its inner product with abstract EJ is going to be lambda. The B part talks about a particular kind of linear combination basically, not an abstract thing. And that linear combination is this abstract Fourier series. And we ask the same question, what if, if I take the inner product of this abstract Fourier series of any function f with dj? So the B parts say that, show that for f in E, define, define P, F, I'm going to talk about this P, what does this P mean? Okay? To be what do you call this I equal to N, F, F, E, I, and E, J. F, E, I, F, E, J. F, E, J, E, J. So there must be a J here. This is a version of what do you call uh, abstract Fourier series. Okay. It's not really exactly abstract Fourier series because it is abstract Fourier series. Because in, in, in this case, the, in this indexing set is i is 1 to n. Okay. Anyway, okay. So I'm going to tell you the physical meaning of it in a minute. But let's first study it and then. Okay. So if this is the case, then this abstract Fourier series okay, okay, has an interesting property. And that property is that if you take F okay, and you remove this part, in other words, this abstract Fourier series of what do you call F, okay, then this difference is always going to be a orthogonal the span of this is how our system. Okay, that's first thing. And and what? And if you compute the norm of this EF, which is going to call it the projection of F, okay, then this must be less than or equal to always norm of F, which must be trivial, just think about it. Is it making sense a little bit? Okay. When you will see, you know, what you call the application of it, it's, it's, it's a very basic result, okay, and it's a very fundamental result. It's so fundamental that, you know, even I used it in my thesis actually. I was proving some of my thesis. Okay. Now the people who are doing partial differential equation, they use it all the time. And I'm going to tell you that why this is the case. Why this is a very interesting result. So let's prove it first. Okay. So what should we do? So I have to show, so it's pretty much simple. So I have PF which is this abstract Fourier series. 
lab to show that from F, if you subtract this, uh, remove this abstract Fourier series, the remaining thing is going to be orthogonal to this orthonormal system, basically. Okay? And, you know, this must be done. So, what should I do basically in order to show this? So, what should be done actually in order to prove this? So, Exactly. So I have to take an element from a span, in other words, something which is a linear combination of these guys, and then show that it's orthogonal to P to P minus F. Can we do that? So what should I take? Let's take the same G. G is also in a span of E. Then we can see that this G over F minus. Also, the general element will have G. Yes, yes it is. That's G. Okay, so let's, let's take this G from span of P1 up to EF. Okay? Do it. So how should we do it? So, first thing is going to be. F minus what do we call F and projection of F. Okay. So what would be the simplified version of this? So this G is basically what do you call uh, this G is this linear combination. So if I substitute this sum here then I can use the linearity of inner product space again and I am going to get what? I am directly writing it. Lambda j okay, ej f agree? Lambda j ej what? Ah, okay, sorry. It must be J E. Okay. So we're gonna get lambda J E J F. So what is E J F? You know. E J F. Okay. We don't know that, but let's think about this second part. Maybe we can get a similar thing out of it. So if I substitute G there. Okay. And uh, I'm going to have what? I'm going to have. Jet component. Jet component. Jet component. So, what I have to do that, I have to subscribe, I have to take this series and substitute it here, for example. I have to take the series and substitute it here and probably I have to do double kind of linearity mm -hmm. but interestingly his argument is a bit more uh, different Fj is same as Fpj Okay. okay. Can I say this is going to be all right? All right. Can I say that this is going to be lambda j and e j and the p f? Agree? Okay. The j runs from one to one. And my claim is that this f e j and e j p f are the same. Actually. They are equal. Now think about it. Why they are equal? If they are equal. You know, the both terms are same and hence the both will get cancelled. Why they are equal? <coughs> so let's let's compute this PJ PF okay. PF and PJ. Okay. Sir, uh, we can take the summation total common. 
-huh. and we get ej the whole ej minus ej mm -hmm. it becomes zero vector directly so zero vector product in the product with any vector is zero ah okay so, so we can ej minus uh, ej directly we can mm -hmm. get it here we, we have ej minus ej Take summation uh, okay. common. Yes. Okay, I, can, I can see what you are saying. I can see what you are saying, but I can, I can, I can prove it in another way. Okay. Okay. So I can, I can take the yes. lambda j is out. E j f and E j, E j, P f. So e j minus E j will get zero, and you have f minus P f, and we have something like that. Zero vector. But you have to be careful. You have to be careful when you are arguing in such a way. But my claim is that if I compute the PF EJ, so I have this sum F EI EI EJ, okay? EJ, what am I going to have? We're going to see that, so this is, this is going to be the first of all sum of inner product. I can pull this out as well. F E I and I can have E I E J here where this runs on you know this is running on I okay now now you can have what so this E I E J is a chronicle delta okay so this is going to be one if I and J are same and it's going to be zero otherwise so if I and J are same and this is one then what would be this equal to L D this is sufficient to be to show that. Okay. So in other words, EJF is same as EJ what we call PF. So if both are equal, then these two linear combinations are same at the Therefore they are different. Okay? Happy with the proof? <coughs> So let's 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 talk about the B part again. Okay, let's talk about B part again. So what we have to show basically that if I take an abstract E and I define this PF which is projection of F actually, I'm going to tell you in a minute. Okay, it's a projection of F onto this span actually. Okay. Anyway, so it's PF which is this one, this is the version of abstract Fourier series. And if I take F and remove this PF, the remaining part is going to be orthogonal to what I call this span actor. So in order to show this orthogonality, I have to do what I have to take an abstract element from here, okay, and show that that is orthogonal to F minus PF. So I took G, okay, from this span, okay, which is here, and I'm taking the inner product of and then, you know, I use the linearity and the first component, uh, the SSP linearity and the first component. And then I just wrote GF actually. So I just substituted G here. I know the expression for G. So it turns out to be this. Again, you the linearity. And if I substituted G here again, I can get a similar thing here, EJ and PF. And then my claim is that this, since this EJ, PF, and E J F are equal, so therefore these two sums are basically identical. So sort of like these two sums are identical, and therefore their difference is going to give you a zero. Now, how these two are identical? In order to do that, let's compute P F E J. So I have P F. Definition is given to me. P operated on the F. Definition is given to me. If I can pull this sum out. And this is like a number actually. This is a number. Inner product is a number. So I can pull this inner product out of this inner product as well. So what is going to remain inside is going to remain EI and EJ. And then I'm saying that EI, EJ is going to be only one. It's going to be one if uh, what I call uh, you know, I is equal to J. Okay? I is equal to J, and if you see, it also directly follows from part A actually, we should have argued in this way as well. 
So PF is what? We know that if I take a linear combination when I you know, in a product with EJ, I'm going to get the, the jth component of the G. Jth component of the G. So here's the question. What is the jth component of PF? So, so the jth component of this expression is basically what you call it.
क्योंकि सर ये भी स्पेन में ही है पी एफ पी एफ भी स्पेन में ही है पी एफ ही स्पेन और हमें पता है कि एफ माइनस पी एफ जो है इट्स परपेंडिकुलर टू द ऑल एलिमेंट्स इन द स्पैन सो इन पर्टिकुलर इट्स परपेंडिकुलर टू द पी एफ ओके कीप इन यू कीप इन व्यू कीप इन व्यू दिस फैक्ट एंड नाउ कम अप टू द इक्वालिटी नाउ कम अप टू द इक्वालिटी सो व्हाट विल बी एफ स्क्वायर कैन आई से दैट दिस इज गोइंग टू बी 